Today on Garage Noise, I'll share with you how to properly apply a base coat, clear coat finish. I'll give you all the tips, tricks, and techniques in applying the base coat and some insight to gun settings and how they work together to optimize your clear coat finish. And this is the paint gun we'll be using today. This is the R802. This is sold by Viver. It's an HVLP gun with a 1.3 tip. We'll be using the 1.3 cap and needle set for our sealer, our base, and our clear coat. Viver claims that this gun consumes 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs of air. Now, I've seen a little bit of discrepancy in that number, so I would just be aware of that. This may not be the perfect small compressor paint gun. But it is a budget paint gun that produces a really nice finish. I think it's basically a SADA replica. This is the vehicle we'll be painting today. Now, in previous episodes, we repaired and prepped this out for paint. So we have this masked off. We have it finished sanded with 600 grit sandpaper, and we're ready to spray. We're also painting the bumper here. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is wipe down both of these panels with isopropyl alcohol. You can use wax and grease remover or a water-based cleaner. I like to use a brand new microfiber towel because I feel like it cleans a little bit better and it doesn't leave any lint behind. I've sanded this bumper with 600 grit sandpaper, but because there are some hard to reach areas to get sanded properly, we are going to use some adhesion promoter. I'm using this U-Pole grip number four. We're going to spray it in all those hard to reach areas to make sure we have good adhesion, just a little bit of insurance so we don't have any peeling down the road. I've repaired a few chips on the bottom of this bumper. Because of that, we've broken through and we have some areas that haven't been primer. They're just minor areas. We're going to use sealer to cover those, as well as the quarter panel where we sanded through the primer. We want to make sure this is all one uniform color before we start spraying. Now, if your primer is in perfect condition, you haven't broken through any areas, it's all one uniform color, I would recommend that you don't use sealer because basically sealer is just a thinned out primer. Not exactly, but basically. Basically, with sealer, you're wanting to use sealer to get a nice uniform surface to apply your base so you get better coverage when you're painting. Okay, so I'm going to mix up a little sealer here. This is the U-Pole 2253. This is a high build primer. That can be used as a sealer. So the sealer mixing ratio is 4 to 1 to 2, 4 parts primer, 1 part activator, and 2 parts reducer. You want to apply your sealer in thin, wet coats. You may need two coats. If you are still transparent after the first coat, then apply a second coat after 15 minutes. We're going to adjust our gun to one and a half turns out on the fluid volume. Our fan pattern is going to be wide open. Our air pressure we're going to set at about 19 PSI on this particular gun. Now, different guns are going to require different settings, but we'll talk about that later on when we're applying our clear coat. I'll go ahead and tack this panel off, remove any dust or lint before we start applying our sealer. Now, when you're applying your sealer, you wanna apply it just like base coat. You wanna do 80% overlap. You wanna be probably about five inches away is typically what I spray. Get one good coat of sealer on there, let it cure, and then if you need to apply another coat, go ahead and do that after about 15 minutes. So we went ahead and sealed our bumper. Now we've got our base coat mixed up. So the base coat we're using today is the Nason XL. Now this particular vehicle is a tri-stage finish. So we're doing a ground coat, which is just white. Then we'll do a pearl coat over top of that, and then I'll apply our clear coat. Now, as for the gun settings for the base coat, it's going to be very similar, if not the same, for our sealer. This particular gun, two and a half turns on the fluid volume, and you're wide open. So we're going to go one and a half turns on the fluid volume. The air pressure is going to be about 20 PSI. Most guns that aren't a SADA clone, four turns out from closed on your fluid volume, and you're at wide open. So you want to adjust that to about two turns out from closed for your base coat. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start applying our base over the sealed area first. We wanna get that covered. We're not worried about blending it out right now. We just wanna get coverage on our sealer. Now we're gonna put one medium to wet coat on. We're gonna let that flash off for 15 minutes. You don't wanna try and cover your sealer in just one coat. You wanna put on one coat, introduce that paint to the surface, let it flash off. You're gonna have better coverage if you do multiple coats. Typically, it's about three coats. 
Here I'm applying some paint to the end of the bumper cover where it meets up with that quarter panel. We want a good match in color from the bumper to the quarter. It's now time to apply the second coat of base, and I'm gonna do this in an X pattern. We're gonna start blending it out into the door. So we'll go one direction, and then we'll go the other direction, gradually bend, blending it about three to four inches out into that door. A base coat clear coat finish is typically two steps. You put on the base color, which is the pigment. That's the actual color of the paint. And then you lay a clear coat over top of it. And that is the protection. That's what protects it from the sun and all the elements. But the great thing about a base coat clear coat finish is it's very forgiving. So when you lay down your clear coat, if it's not absolutely perfect, it can be sanded and polished to a high gloss. But with the information I give you later in this video, you'll be able to lay down clear coat like a pro. You can see how our base coat is silky smooth. That's what you want. You want a completely smooth finish to apply your clear coat to. Now we're gonna add another coat of base here, and then we're gonna start applying our mid coat pearl. Now before you start applying too many coats of base, you always wanna inspect your base coat before you apply the next coat, especially if you're doing this at home. There's a lot of opportunity for dust to get in your paint, and if it does get in your paint and you don't remove it before you clear, then that dust is gonna show up in your clear coat. Inspecting my paint, I can see that it's nice and silky smooth, that's what you want. If you have a roughness in your base coat, there's a couple issues with that. You could be using the wrong reducer for the temperature you're spraying in. That will cause that issue, or you're not putting it on wet enough. Now, after inspecting it, I see I have a few little particles of dust. So here, I'm just taking a little bit of 2,000 grit sandpaper. It doesn't take much, and we're knocking those dust nibs off. And then we'll tack it off, make sure it's clean, and I'll apply another coat of base. I'll go ahead and mix up our mid-coat pearl. This is the Nason XL. This mixes up two to one. That's two parts paint and one part reducer. And make sure you're using the correct reducer for the temperature you're spraying in. I'll give it a quick stir, snap on the cap, and I always like to lift this up with the liner to make sure it's all sealed. And then we'll lock down the collar and we'll be ready to spray. Now I'm using a disposable cup system. You might want to check these out if you're doing a lot of painting. They're very handy. And once you start using these systems, you will not go back. I'm also using the Gunbud Light, and this comes in handy if you're not painting in a booth. And I'll leave links to all the tools and products I use in the description if there's anything that you're interested in. I'll be applying two coats of this mid-coat pearl back to back, just a few minutes in between coats. We wanna make sure we cover that ground coat and go about four to five inches past that ground coat to make sure we have a good transition in that blend. Time to mix up some clear, and the clear we're using today is a U-Pole Spot Panel Clear Coat. This mixes up four to one, so we'll add four parts of the clear coat and one part of the activator. When applying clear, it's important to understand that your gun settings work together to atomize your clear coat. When setting up your gun, start with your air pressure. I know that most guns atomize clear coat best at about 28 to 30 PSI. I start with my fluid volume at two and a half to three turns out from closed. So I'll close it all the way, turn it two and a half to three turns out. Now I know that I have enough air pressure to atomize that clear coat. Then I'll make a pass and test out how that clear coat is atomizing and how that finish is laying down on the panel. I'll make that first pass at about five inches away from the panel because your distance will affect how that clear coat lays on the panel. Your speed is also gonna affect how much material you're putting on that panel. If you're moving slower, you're gonna be putting more material on that panel. If you're moving faster, you're gonna be putting less material as you make your pass. So what I would suggest is pick a speed and a distance that you wanna spray at and adjust your gun from that point. So now you have your gun set up at 28 to 30 PSI. You have your fan pattern wide open. You've picked a distance that you wanna spray from and a speed that you wanna consistently spray at. Now, after you make your first pass, you can accurately adjust your gun for the way that you're spraying to get the best results possible. If you make your first pass and your clear coat is not going on wet enough, it seems dry, then there's a couple adjustments you can make. You can open up your fluid volume just a little bit so you put more material on the panel. Or 
you could spray a little bit quicker and a little bit closer to the panel and you're getting more material on the panel. If you make your first pass and you're getting too much texture or orange peel in your clear coat, you can do a couple things. Back away from the panel a little bit, adjust your distance from the panel, and that will help atomize that clear coat better as it hits the panel. Or you could turn your fluid volume down just a bit, and I would recommend about a quarter turn at a time when you're adjusting your fluid volume for clear coat. So if you're having a problem getting a glass-like finish in your clear coat, whether it's orange peel or dry spray, do a test panel. You need to start with set parameters. So it's all about experimenting and testing and understanding how your air pressure, your fluid volume, your speed and distance all affect how that clear coat flows out. So use the information and techniques I suggested here and let me know how it works for you in the comments below. Let's finish up the second coat of clear and take a look at the results. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found this information useful. If you did and want to see more, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.